Hello and welcome to IABC IMINA webinar. Uh, this time uh, the topic is the art of PR in business. Uh, my name is Yasna Sukhadouls, I'm one of the board members of IABC IMINA. And today uh, with me we have our presenters uh, Maisoon Ramadan from Roche and Louise Jacobson from uh, Brazen uh, Communications Agency. Um, so maybe in the beginning, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be taking those in the end. Uh, and uh, you can use the, the box uh, called questions, uh, and I will read them out loud. Uh, and since today we have two presenters, uh, we'll be switching back and forth uh, between them. And uh, Maysoon and Louise, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Jasna, for this introduction. Uh, hello, everybody, whoever you are. Salute from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Uh, today, we're going to be talking, as mentioned, about the art of PR in business in the UAE. And from my side, I will be covering how it works from a client perspective and corporate perspective, maybe. And I'm quite sure that my colleague will be talking further about the agency and PR agency perspective. To start with, I'd like to introduce myself very shortly and briefly. Uh, I am heading the Communications and Public Affairs Department here at Roche Diagnostics and uh, running in the Middle East covering the region. Um, uh, technically, uh, what we're responsible for is our internal and external communications when we speak of around 16 countries and more than 450 employees in the region. Um, luckily, I am basically uh, one of the members who are trying to establish the GDCC chapter of IABC uh, in the region currently. And this is something that keeps me even more committed and uh, excited to do this webinar as the first time for me uh, in uh, this platform. Um, in addition to doing the topic that's very, I would say, important to me, the communication public affairs, I'm a very um, passionate person when it comes to speaking on women and the leadership topic. I've been uh, actively uh, contributing to different platforms, one of which was recently the Women in Leadership Economic Forum and uh, that's technically an area where I continue to do as much as possible. Um, finally, just to give a final probably info, I am originally Jordanian, half uh, Turkish and I've been living in the UAE since 2009 and um, I would do my best today to share a few tips and important information where we get the chance to exchange experience and at the end start to give some value of what we do. And I can now give the stage to my colleague who's going to take you further. Hello, everyone. My name is Louise. Thank you very much for the lovely introduction, Jasna. Um, I'm the managing partner of Brazen here based in Media City in Dubai. Um, I'm an award-winning PR practitioner. I started my career in about um, 2001, so you can probably work out my age if you can see how much experience I have there. Um, as Ms. Soon mentioned, I'm going to give you a perspective from um, an agency side, even though I have worked client side as well in a former life. Um, I'm originally from the UK, so this will be quite interesting, I guess, I hope, for you to see the perspective of someone coming from the West over to the Middle East and specifically the, the UAE to see the viewpoints on the various topics we'll discuss today. Um, in terms of brands, I've worked with some of the, the biggest brands in the world, which I've had the pleasure of doing so since the start of my career. Some of those brands are Merlin Entertainment, Disney, AMC Networks, um, and I like to commentate on industry issues, PR and social media. Um, in terms of Brazen, which is my consultancy, I launched it in 2014. Um, I was at Brazen in the UK. We have an, an office in the amazing city of Manchester, which was established in 2001. And really what we do here, we're a smaller agency in comparison to the big globals. Um, some would call us a boutique agency. And we really give a fresh strategic and creative approach for brands such as Atlantis the Palm, Freedom Pizza and Kareem. Um, we usually work in the B2C space, but we do um, B2B as well. Um, earlier this year, we had the great pleasure of winning our first regional award, which was the PRCA Media Awards Regional Campaign of the Year for our work with the Wendy's brand. 
and Wendy's is the third largest uh, burger restaurant chain in the world. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to be here today. Um, my contact details are at the bottom for you to get in touch after this, and I look forward to seeing your questions at the end. Um, that's it from me for just a second. I'm now going to pass over back to Mason. So, now, a very important question that we keep asking ourselves as we are professionals. What could be the characteristics uh, which makes us basically achieve our success? How we can do it? Um, since I've been the, uh, I mean, in this, I would say, region, with this particular role where I've got the chance to establish the Communication Public Affairs Department uh, in Rolf Diagnostics Middle East, few areas were really important for us to realize and make sure that we implement throughout our journey. Partnership is an important area where being strategic and a strategic business partner is basically how I call it. This characteristic would leave us really have clear vision on how we want to move forward and certainly reach out to very sustainable, clear outcomes for any initiative that we run. Moreover, thinking at as us being communicators before anything, it's very important as a characteristic to be a very strong professional communicator. And here we're talking definitely about the first element, which is a good listener, in order to be able to give back and respond in an appropriate way, it could be a very simple reaction or a good exercise for it where we actually are talking about the general communication in different platforms. And having said that, we all know that this would allow us really to have a better process in whatever we do and certainly innovate in most areas where creativity is very important. Another aspect when we speak of relationships, uh, we have been always clear that relationship management is a very important key characteristic. And this is something that we see with different vendors, clients, stakeholders, which basically we are responsible for or we deal with on a daily basis. This includes our PR agencies and our internal, I would say, uh, stakeholders, employees, teams, whomever you're working with, or external entities that you're responsible or you're taking over the communication with. Uh, one more area which is very important, uh, I believe that has to do with the presence that we have as in characteristics for any PR professional, which is speaking. Being presentable when we speak, regardless of the language that we're speaking, because at the end, we need to make sure that we have the capability of speaking the language which is mostly communicated in whatever you're working. Uh, this is very important for me also from a correct perspective. Yes, I mentioned here that we have Arabic language, a lot of people, and speaking population is here. However, the official communication language is also at the end in Arabic, yet the business language in English. So speaking and being a good speaker is a very important characteristic that we need to basically when we are trying to succeed in PR. Uh, another area which is trust. I've mentioned trust here because as an advisor, it's very important for us to have that trust and it's basically a process that build up. You build it up by the different experiences you put in place, the way you deal and handle different situations and having said that, we believe that being a very trustworthy advisor is a very important characteristic that would allow the communicator, the successful PR person, to move on with the different activities, initiatives, thus build the poor and uh, proper career development. Car courage as well is an area where it's really important. Because from different, I would say, situations where we need to handle or run or lead, it's very important to have, have that courage to take any decision or take any action that's required on time, any communication that's necessary at a very important moment. And finally, knowledge. The reason why I have knowledge here is because from a corporate perspective or from a PR perspective when you're talking about a client, uh, you really need to have enough knowledge about your company, your brand, your mission, and certainly the vision. And definitely to mention the guidelines that we have in order to be able to align and have that understanding across with different stakeholders that you're basically dealing with. And uh, from a corporate perspective, that was a very short summary that I can give about the characteristics. And I'm going to now um, send the screen back to my colleague, 
if you think of it really. Okay. okay, thank you, Ms. Soon. So from a uh, consultancy point of view, um, these are just some of the key elements that we look for, I look for when it comes to building a team and looking at employees and really thinking about what it takes to thrive in a modern PR consultancy here in the UAE. The first is a variety of skill sets, um, so social media, digital skill sets are now required in, in addition to traditional PR. And this probably won't come as any surprise, especially to anyone in a consultancy environment. Um, I'm looking for people that are digitally savvy, that can talk, engage in the social media space, um, embrace all the new technology, because as we know, it's, it's ever-changing and ever-evolving. Um, so this then informs some of the skills I look for people. So one of the ladies in my team, she did photography, and she's also a filmmaker. So when it comes to creating content for things like Instagram and YouTube, it just gives us another skill, a more creative, artistic way of looking at content. Um, so looking at a variety of skills, I say, is really, really uh, crucial. Um, creativity, this is at the heart of everything we do, so that's delivering engaging concepts that will really transcend and cut through the noise that everyone has on their phones and laptops um, in everyday uh, usage. Um, it might be worth noting that the media landscape here in the UAE is changing um, in line with the rest of the world, so there's now fewer journalists, now fewer titles, so to really get their attention, you have to be as creative as possible, whether that's on, your, on a phone call, a pitch email, a press release, sending an infographic, you have to make sure that you're creative in that approach. Um, again, the UAE is, is a very hyper-mobile place. Lots of people here have two phones. Everyone is addicted to all the social media apps. So when we're looking at social media campaigns, again, we have to really bear this in mind and create compelling creative content that gets seen and gets noticed and shared, which is the ultimate aim. Um, multitasking, agency life is very, very busy. We're working with lots of different um, stakeholders from a variety of clients, media, influencers, and indeed um, end consumers. So you really have to make sure you're organized, you take initiative, um, and things are done on time. So you've got to just make sure you're skilled at multitasking lots of things at once. Um, I would say willingness to learn is, is also key. The comms world is constantly evolving. So having team members that really pride themselves on keeping ahead of the trends, ahead of the curves, and being adaptable to this change and really embracing it, and thinking how we can use these new techniques to further benefit campaigns from our clients is, is also a great asset. Um, in terms of personality, this is really, really important, especially for a smaller agency like ourselves. I look for people that can fit in with our culture, fit in with our team, fit in with our clients. Um, Agency life is very, very demanding, so you need to be confident. I like ambitious people that we can grow and, and promote and want to stay part of our, our family that we've created here. You obviously have to be very positive, and I like a, a good sense of humor as well. Um, you have to have that team player ethos, especially when the pressure is on here. Um, and then finally, passion. So we're an agency that prides ourselves on going the extra mile and above and beyond when it comes to our campaigns and our clients. Um, so again, I look for people that are willing to do that work weekends, work long hours. Again, the UAE is a very, very busy business environment. Wars, I'd say so in the West. It's not uncommon to have a meeting at six o'clock at night, whereas in the UK, that was that was very, very irregular. The people that are really willing to work hard and have that passion and love what they do and who they do it for um, is really, really key. So, let me see, I'm just gonna pass back to you now. I don't know if my screen is showing now. Yeah. So, a very interesting statement that we actually agreed on, uh, which is the magic formula. We called it the magic formula O and E. So, what is it about? It's very important to mention that every professional in PR requires to reach a particular target. And having said that, Setting clear objectives and expected outcomes can really help us have a clear framework and understand the direction where we are going. Uh, why it is important? Because 
certainly every PR professional is dealing with different stakeholders, as we mentioned. And we want to make sure that there's a very clear alignment in our business goals. And we are all at the same level. And we want to all, at the end, reach to a particular goal that we agreed on. And having that goal being set, it will help us also to organize our internal objectives and basically clarify the outcomes that we can also, as a function, offer. Another area which is really important from a formula perspective is proactivity. Uh, as we do always like basically live in a very volatile, uncertain, uh, I would say, industry in general, where everything can happen at any moment, we really need to be very proactive and uh, to have that very closely integrated in our strategic communication. And definitely being proactive means that we have to be organized, plan things ahead of time, yet that does not mean that we are not well equipped and having the enough skill set to manage any risky situation that might come up any moment. Yet, uh, still, it's very important to have that preparation all the time from our perspective. Uh, the very important reason that made us actually think about these objectives and expected outcomes is we all basically deal with different stakeholders. The stakeholder level, the knowledge they have, the experience they have might be very different. And maybe given an example for that would be good from a, a healthcare industry. Um, for example, media is one of the very important stakeholders that we deal with on a probably daily basis. And we know that in some certain countries, uh, not all media are specialized in particular domains or fields, like healthcare. So setting these objective and expected outcomes in our strategic communication and alignment with media, for instance, will allow us also and give us a chance to understand what sort of goals we can achieve and more efficiently as we really have clear expectations on it. And that's from, uh, I would say, our perspective. And I'm going to pass it now for Louise to share her view on this topic. That's great, thank you. So first of all, in terms of objectives, it sounds really, really obvious, but you have to define these up front and how you're going to measure those objectives. Um, sometimes we don't always get objectives from clients, so we're looking at RFPs or pitches. So we then make it um, our mission to go and sit with the client and make sure we all have agreed objectives that we think are going to be deliverable. Um, you also need to make sure you're going to know how you're going to measure those as well. Um, sometimes working from, a, from the UK to here, I find sometimes lacking is audience insight. It's exactly who they're targeting, age, sex, demographic. All of those factors are really important when it comes to media publication selection and also social media. So that's something we really try and get a grip on in terms of who exactly we're targeting to make sure that the end result um, is as great as it can be. The second thing is strategy. So making sure that PR is really being used effectively to meet these objectives that you've just spent this time laying down and that your plan of how you're going to achieve everything is clear and concise. Um, we do get pro approached quite a lot. Can you issue a press release for us? Well, yes, we can, but really what's that going to achieve? Um, you need to look at the overall goal and all the different tactics in place to achieve that goal. Um, for example, we looked at a big sentiment shifting campaign last year for one of our clients. So at the start of the campaign, there was very little interest in the media, there wasn't a particular appetite for the product that we were trying to um, promote and the brand. So we really had to look at a lot of different tactics, including photo shoots, influencer outreach, looking at um, sampling events, speaker opportunities for our clients, just to make sure that the brand really resonated in the minds of the media. And the end result was that we had lots of nice coverage, lots of positive reviews for the particular brand and, and product. But that was like a, a big six month heavyweight campaign. Um, so just to make sure that your client and you obviously the agency, you know that this is the timeline you've got to achieve and this is what we're going to need to do to achieve it. Um, expected outcomes, the key is in the name. <laughs> the consultancy can only ever give you predictions. Um, PR when you're dealing with journalists is never guaranteed. You can't guarantee A, being in the publication, or B, the size of the article that will happen, which we get asked quite a lot. Um, but what we can do is, based on our expertise and number of factors, give you what we think we can achieve. And those sort of factors are things uh, such as budget, um, media appetite for the story, um, timing is really important, um, the strength that we feel of the campaign and the messaging. So all of those things should be taken into consideration before you give your results. 
Um, and at the beginning of the campaign, we sit and we go through all that, and then based on our expertise, that's what we lay down and that's what we pledge to our clients. Um, the fourth thing is reporting. So making sure this is very regular and visible. Um, so you're not just, once you've got a client just going away and doing all the work, you need to consistently report back in a format that your client finds useful. Um, for us, we do this on a Thursday, which is the end of the working week here in the UAE, where they get a work in progress email, and then they get a, a monthly, uh, more in-depth report talking about all the results achieved that month and also looking forward. So just making sure that you're reporting and people, in the, your, the stakeholders in your client's business or in-house are all seeing it as well, so they can really see the value that the PR is bringing on a, a regular basis is really key. Um, and then finally, results and flexibility. Yes, we can get immediate results with some things, but the bigger goal, for the long-term goal, for example, a sentiment shifting campaign, it can take longer. So just making sure people understand that we're not just dealing with guaranteed advertising space, we're dealing with a number of factors, a number of um, people, a number of filters for the, the end message to have them. Um, and even if we do lay down a plan, sometimes things don't always work. So we might have to tweak the plan you know, halfway through the campaign just to make sure you get the desired results. So degree flexibility um, is always key with, with PR, I find. Okay, over to you, Mosin. And the other issue that we basically would like to tap on and share some insights is the importance of technology. We all acknowledge that we are living in an era of um, very dynamic, fast growth and uh, innovative ways of delivering information. And having said that, we all know that it's a lot of different platforms around there, different ways to do it. So how do we really need to and how, when should we integ integrate the technology? Uh, as we know that we have many options out there, it could be as simple as an email when it comes to PR from a uh, global uh, corporate perspective, or it could be a video, website, application, and up to a social media platform that also is, we know, is like multiple options out there. So before we really want to do that, what should be, be considered in order to make sure that we're doing the wise, I would say, selection? There's a small I would say homework that we would like to introduce here, which is we call a selection in the central segmentation. First, we really need to know who are we addressing with this particular tool, what is the message, and where we really want to send it. And having said that, we need to take the same exercise of objectives and expected outcomes. Um, and this is an area where we it would allow us basically to see where we want to reach, when do we really want to reach in the sense of an outcome. And there's another element which we really need to consider here, which is the cost, because cost here plays a big role, and that will basically also have a big impact on the decision that we would like to make. And certainly the long-term and the short-term relevant, I would say, uh, uh, conclusions here, how it's impacting our strategic uh, alignment with the business overall goal. And uh, when we really want to basically discuss, I mean, the details of what we really want to integrate, Sometimes we fall into the aspect of, oh, we really need to have it. Uh, that's technically really not true. Uh, there are some areas where you might really not need these different, I would say, technologies that are available out there. Uh, a simple maybe email would do its, its work and it will be impactful enough. So here comes again the exercise of segmentation, knowing your audience, what it requires, what the business objective, and whether this particular selection will really achieve your required objective and target. Uh, afterwards, we need to look at the next steps. Because in any project management, the integration should be really very closely monitored and certainly proactively managed. And here I'm talking about an example where in healthcare particularly, when you're responsible, for instance, uh, for a social platform uh, that you're running, it's really important that we're talking about a key element of people sharing their opinion. And this could be a treatment that you're using, a test that's being developed, and somebody is running this test to himself, on himself. And this kind of communication that we'll have on that platform will allow you to make sure that you are responding on time, you're able basically to give the feedback on time, and this is at the end the image. 
And having said that, it's very important that those platforms are monitored and accordingly, again, evaluated whether they're going to be there or you should really revisit and change the platform or keep. And this takes me to the last point, which is about the capabilities. When we're talking about such an important platform where it should be followed up, we really need to think of cost, as we mentioned before. We need to talk about the quality of input and speed of response. And this all takes us to a one important aspect, which is the capability. Do you really have all these capabilities to deliver such uh, follow-up and monitoring for such uh, technology? Uh, whether you have enough team to do it, you have enough skill sets that will allow you to use these different platforms is very important. And having said that, all these elements together would basically give you the chance to put your own analysis and think about whether you use this particular, I would say, uh, platform or the other, and whether it's really important for you to do it from the first place, and it will basically align with your overall objective and the company's overall objective. And now, now I'm going to share the screen uh, and give you the chance to share the insight. Thank you, Martin. So the first thing, and um, when I say technology, from my point of view, I'm going to talk about content marketing and social media. So the first thing is um, consider the channels. You don't have to do everything on social media. There's lots of different um, platforms. Make sure you choose the right ones based on your objectives. Um, and before you do that, make sure you've got the statistics for all of the social media channels in your region. Um, and there's lots of different um, sources online that can help you give those. For us, it's the Arab Social Media Report, which which is very useful, and there's companies like Social Bakers that I know do that. So make sure you have all the intel available before you even start thinking which channels that you want to communicate on. Um, just to give you an example, if you're looking at um, going into the Saudi Arabia market, something you should look at is YouTube, because um, KSA is the number one country worldwide with the most YouTube daily views, and the UAE is number three. So having that intel and having that research and insight will really help define which channels you're going to be talking on before you even start anything. Um, Facebook here, in terms of penetration, is very popular. So to reach the mass audience, Facebook is a, is a good one to use. But then you've got um, Instagram, which is the tool that everyone is using. It's, it's cool. It's great for, great for young demographic. It lends itself to beautiful imagery. So again, make sure that you have all that selection based on your objectives and your target audience. Um, Secondly, resource, and I may soon mention this, but any social media, any PR indeed, any technology will need the right skill set to manage that. Whether that's you've got an agency or you have someone internally or both, you just need to make, need to make sure that you have people that know what they're doing um, and it's not just left to juniors to look at. Um, so that's really, really important. In terms of content, ensure you have the capabilities, um, whether again that's an agency or you have that in-house to create compelling content for your channels. So if you're thinking of Instagram, which is hugely, hugely popular here in the UAE, you need to make sure that you have um, a photographer or you have a graphic designer and you invest in that and you, you have all of these tools ready to create some compelling content. Otherwise, don't bother. Just because a, a, the channel is cool, if you haven't got the right capabilities and resource to make sure you create some really awesome stuff, then I, I wouldn't bother. Um, Embracing new techniques, even if they're just small techniques, for example, we're using stop motion videos on Instagram at the moment, which are going down really well and are relatively inexpensive to do. Um, my team members are very good at bringing these new techniques to life, so let's again go through those and disseminate which ones you think will work to create some really great content. Um, this may sound really simple, but um, know the rules. So make sure you have a copy of the legal guidelines. Um, TRA set out do's and don'ts here in the UAE. So things like um, uh, vulgar use of um, alcohol images is banned, um, defamatory comments about the government is banned, lots of other rules. We've got to be really, really careful. Um, aside from that, be sensitive to the local culture as well. Um, so at the moment, it's Ramadan. Um, we look after social media for some f and clients. So instead of posting throughout the day lots of lovely pictures of food, we're doing it at Iftar, so it's more culturally appropriate and sensitive. Um, a strategic plan, so looking at what you want to achieve, how you're going to reach the goal, what are the timings, 
and things like how you'll deal with issues. So if you have a, a complaint on a Facebook page or an Instagram page, what's the process and what's the timing to get that resolved um, in an appropriate way? So rather than just like a copy paste, sorry to hear that, make sure that your responses are personal and you're able to get back to them in a, in a timely fashion as well. And there's also lots of important things you need to really get in place before you even think about posting any sort of content. Things like a visual style guide, tone of voice, look at your social media advertising and your targeting as well. And then finally, measurement. Uh, I talk a lot about measurement because I'm particularly passionate about this um, from a comms point of view because it's an investment, so you need to be able to report back and measure your results. Um, and this is daily. The community managers should be looking at the results certain content is having. It should then inform your next content calendar of when you should be posting, what you should be posting. Um, there are lots of great analytics tools for social media. They're the ones that are free on the likes of Facebook. Um, for Instagram, there's Iconosquare as well. So just making sure that you've got all that in place before you do anything. Um, and in terms of the parameters, yes, um, the figures of communities are really, really important. But you should also be looking at things like um, engagement rates as well. So really make sure before you do anything, you have all this mapped out. And yes, of course, you'll have to adapt as you go along. But at least if you can be prepared as much as possible, that'll give you the best chance of success. I'm just going to hand over to you. Yes. And the journey. Um, how do we basically get the chance uh, to shape our learnings from the experience that uh, personally I had here in the UAE? It's very important to mention that the UAE is a business hub and it's a very fast flowing economy where it's really open for every possible innovation across that you would imagine and uh, I would say that this is an amazing uh, reason why we got the, we get the chance actually to see a lot of new things happen only for the first time probably here in the UAE and this gives us a very great learning to think. Uh, the second area is basically consciousness that we have. Due to this innovative, I would say, uh, atmosphere and environment where we're living, and particularly we're getting the chance to experience business, uh, this exposure basically allows us to have very clear uh, consciousness, trying to adapt and mirror the pace that we have here, and uh, certainly to make sure that we have this uh, great uh, learning possibility and opportunity that will shape our knowledge in connecting different dots together when we want to basically address a particular topic. Um, and when we talk about the very, I would say, important thing that is very important and must mention here about the UAE is the diversity. This uh, country is uh, very well known for its different age group, gender and nationalities, probably more than 70 here. And certainly there's different backgrounds of the uh, uh, people who are living here in the UAE. And this would really basically give us a very good experience. and enormous amount of experience when we want to basically discuss or run any particular project, whether it is something that has to do with the organization itself, how we handle the different customers that we have out there, how we're trying to basically achieve particular goals in business when we want to run any particular campaign. And uh, this is something also that allows us to think very well through of what we're doing, try to adapt and accommodate anything that is required. And uh, from a perspective of needs, this this is how I basically covered it. Although the language or the business language here is English, yet we know that uh, there is a very huge difference of Arab and Arabic speaking, uh, I would say, people here in the country. And especially that's part of the GCC as well. And having said that, uh, the need that we have is to really understand the different cultures that we have here. Uh, not only when we speak of language, but even body language. You'll be surprised that there are certain uh, gestures that you might basically do. It might be completely understood in different ways, in different cultures. And they are all reside here in the UAE. So this is an element to be really important that you should integrate and accommodate when you're doing your own PR and communication campaigns or strategy. Um, I would say also it's very important to uh, summarize something about uh, living in the UAE and building a career in the UAE. It's very enriching. And it makes you really see lots of different aspects. As I mentioned here on my slide, that I feel sometimes as, as if I'm traveling at the very same moment to complete different countries. 
because you really need to capture that diversity in the way you talk, the way you behave, the way you basically have your body language, and the way you put your strategies in place in order to fulfill your business goals and targets. And finally, I would say, as an Arab, uh, I believe that this country made me who I am right now as a person, not only as a professional PR, uh, I would say, member, but as a whole, as an individual. And I will pass it on to Louise to share her insights. Thank you. This is the final slide, everyone. Um, thanks for listening so far. So from my perspective, um, coming from the UK, coming from the West, it's a fascinating cultural melting pot. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with people from across the MENA region, across the world. I would never have the opportunity to do so um, working in the UK. So personally and professionally, it's an amazingly enriching experience. You can learn lots of different people. So I feel from that I've, I've grown as a communicator. Um, one of the things I found relatively quickly is PR is still relatively new in the market, about 50 years old from what I'm told, compared to about 100 uh, in the Western market. So um, when I first started out, I realized I had to do an education job about what PR is, what it isn't, and what it can actually do for a business. Um, so that's something um, at all touch points, at all meetings, I was constantly doing um, just to show the value of PR and explaining what actually it is. Um, Cultural differences, embrace them. So um, it's amazing to learn about the different cultures here. Uh, for example, it's Ramadan, so we're getting involved in charity initiatives and going to iftars, which is amazing, something again we never do. Um, the people here, they, they like the face-to-face -face time, so we do lots of meetings, lots of networking, but also just be aware of the sensitivities as well and, and make sure you're, you're respectful of those, of those cultures. Um, in terms of language, uh, as Macy mentioned, English is the main business language here, but being a native English speaker, I've even had to adapt some of the um, words that I would use wouldn't transcend, people wouldn't understand what I was talking about. So I've had to really think about the language I use to make sure that every phone call, email even, or press release or piece of social media content is going to be understood by quite a large, diverse audience. Um, and then finally, I'll just say embrace the self-improvement. So since I've been here uh, in 2014, um, I think I have, I hope anyway, um, become a better communicator in all areas. And that's just because of living in the, the UAE, living in Dubai, and coming into contact with lots of different people with lots of different experiences um, to really shape kind of who you are and your communi from a communications point of view, but also personally as well. Um, so if anyone hasn't been to the UAE, I suggest you, you do come and try. It's an amazing, amazing place, um, incredibly enriching, diverse. Um, yeah. And I think it's from me. That's it from our slides. So thank you very much for listening. And Dustin, are we passing back to you? Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Soon, and thank you, Louise. Um, we already have one question uh, from Michael Nord, and I'm encouraging everybody else who uh, wants to add a question to, to do that and just write in the questions box. So uh, let me read Michael's question out loud. Uh, when it comes to culture using images, do you need photos of veiled women? Do you need to show local people or do more generic people images work? Oh, do you want to, I mean, yeah. yeah, let's give it from, a, I would say, a corporate perspective. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we have to make sure that we respect the culture that we're talking about, and it actually, whatever we do, serves the purpose. So there are some, basically, campaigns where you would like to use, probably, a person who would suit the campaign, and there are items where we basically use as is, or we just do not have to use a real, real person. Uh, it certainly depends on the campaign that we're talking about, the message that we're trying to convey, and how it will serve the purpose. Uh, but there's no strict guidelines saying that you can't use uh, uh, an unveiled person at all. Actually, there's a lot of different campaigns out there with women without a veil. However, from also a customized perspective, it's very nice to give the notion of this region at the end. So maybe we try to tend to use more of a Middle Eastern features in some com campaigns if it's targeting a particular population. But from a perspective of veiling, uh, it's not a necessary thing at all. 
And I'd like to ask also Louise how she sees it from a PR perspective. Yeah. No, I, t I totally agree. Um, as we said before, it's, it's a diverse cultural melting pot, so there's lots of different people here. So when we're looking at, um, say, putting uh, images in collateral together, we'll consider all our audience and make sure they're represented as much as possible. Um, obviously, things, um, if a palette is addressed and presented, you need to consider in the UK, you'd think nothing about wearing a you know, short, short pair of shorts or a reeling top, but here we just wouldn't do that because it, we, it would be inappropriate. I have seen some brands that do that, um, and that's fine if you're promoting a beach club or something, but for me, for our clients, we're always very, very mindful and respectful of the local culture. Um, even things when it comes to talking or promoting alcohol, which you have to be very, very careful here, it is allowed on social media, but again, the images have to be respectful. So you just have to just use your common sense, um, make sure you've got input for your team. So I have uh, someone that's uh, Emirati working with us, I have someone that's Egyptian, just pass it on and just double check that you, you feel it's appropriate. Thank you. Um, another question also from Michael um, is, do professional network and associations like IABC play a role in the development of the communications profession in the region? What's your opinion? Maybe Maysoon, if you go first. I would basically say certainly, and that is the reason why we are now currently in the process of establishing a chapter here in the GCC. And uh, I believe that uh, the network is important. Uh, the fact that this is a platform that has this huge diverse uh, i would say uh, i would say group of uh, uh, professionals coming all together to exchange experience uh, could not be even better if we definitely have a chapter here in the region and yes we, the answer would be certainly Louise, would you like to add? yes of course thank you great question um, there's lots of different organizations here. There's, there's METPRA, the Middle East PR Association, there's PRCA, both of which are active members, um, which are great in supporting PR professionals. But I think even just more on an individual level, I find more than the UK, I'm more networked with um, some of my agency peers. I know a lot of the agency heads. It's a very friendly environment. Um, people want to see you do well. They want to see you succeed, even though they are technically your competitors. Um, we all speak a lot, we all go to different networking events, um, there's media networking events to go to, there's something every week if you wanted to, and that's one of the great things I love about here, it's just a lot more of a friendly, proactive, productive PR business environment that I've seen. Um, when we won our award earlier in the year, we got lots of people emailing saying congratulations, well done, which is something we've, I've experienced before, so it's very, very uh, nice and collaborative. If I can add a, a question here uh, to Louise. Uh, is there a difference between uh, UK and uh, UA uh, in terms of uh, transfers between the agencies? Do you, in other words, do you steal each other's uh, people, employees? What, from the UK? Yeah. Um, I would say that I offer, we have an office in the UK, so um, some of the team come out regularly to come over here. Um, when I'm looking at different, we're looking at employees and what I need to fill a certain skills gap, I need to think, is it someone I need from the region? Is it an Arabic speaker or would someone that has got great contacts in London be a benefit to one of our clients? So it just depends on the individual, um, but I, I try not to steal anyone's team members, that's for sure. Um, but as I say, it's a really lovely collaborative place and all of my team members, no matter what level, are very well, well networked in their fields as well. Um, but again, um, from the UK point of view, we try and get our teams to come over as much as possible so they can see um, how great it is and, and experience the difference of working here. Okay, thank you. So, uh, next question is from Alex Malouf. Uh, how is influencer marketing changing PR in the UAA? A, sorry. Can you repeat the question? I could not hear that. Uh, how is influencer marketing changing PR in the UAE? Do you, do you I'll, hear me? I'll go, should I go first? It's okay, massively changed. Yeah, sure, it's massively changed, the stakes here. Um, a lot of what we do now is looking at influencer outreach, looking at um, people on Instagram, looking at bloggers, looking at influencers for campaigns. But it's about using them effectively and using the right people. So rather than just paying them some money to post something, it has to have a really meaningful um, insightful end game so they can't just be taking 
pictures and selfies of them with your products. It has to be something really, really meaningful and relevant to your audience. Um, we've seen a lot of clients, uh, influence marketing, as we know, has been the buzzword for a couple of years. Um, and that's affecting the media landscape as a lot of the brands here are putting their budgets into influence for marketing. It can be incredibly effective if used in the right way. And of course, you get all the instant results and measurements up front as well. Um, so we, what we do, we look at influencers. We have an internal screening process. We will, we will put certain influencers to our clients that we think are appropriate and relevant to their brand. And then we will work with the influencers to, of how we're going to tell that story of that particular product campaign or messaging we need to do. I think yeah, I can add that it's a bit also, uh, I mean, at least from what I understood, I heard that it's about influencer marketing. And, uh, influencer yeah, marketing, yeah. Yeah, it's something that has to do with the industry, I would say, uh, because um, as Luis mentioned, there are certain also clear things to take into consideration, which are the regulators. Uh, for example, I mean, in our case in uh, healthcare, yes, you might have a particular ways to influence that by influencers, as they call, but it's very highly, very regulated. So it can't be as free as could be in other particular industries that could be relevant to any, I would say, accessories or anything that would be much easier than healthcare. Okay, thank you. Uh, our next question is from Maria and she's asking, is U UAE interested in comms expertise from other countries? Uh, are the UAE companies interested in communicating to global audiences? I mean, I think here it's very important to mention that the communication as a function is becoming very important and integral in any industry in the world. And the more we're having these fast-changing platform tools available, they also realize that the access to information has become really very important. And uh, this is basically what's changing the way all companies in the region, and particularly also in the UAE, are getting impacted with that. And having said that, yes, they are very interested because um, we know that there are certain countries uh, who are really like um, ahead of us in particular fields. And this exchange of information is very important and also the experience. Having said that as well, of course, we would like to have that here. And it's something that we see as a trend. A lot of communicators are being requested to join uh, different companies here. From a corporate perspective, at least, I can see that the communication fun function is is really now important. You see a lot of more communicators in this corporate world coming here to the UAE to join. Louise, would you like yeah. to add something? Yeah, sure. Just just one thing. We were always um, wanting to hear about people from different nationalities, people from different places who want to come here and work. Um, we're getting more and more. I'm getting more and more CVs from different people across the world as, as Dubai is becoming this you know amazing, fantastic city in terms of business and communications as well. Um, and it's also great to see that there's um, platforms such as the STEP conference, which is a, a tech um, design event that happens every year in Dubai. It's really showcasing what Dubai is doing in terms of communications and digital to the world and trying to put that on a platform as well. Um, because some of the stuff we're doing here, yes, is a little bit behind some of the markets, but then it isn't. Some of the things on Instagram we're doing and, and, and how people are using that are a little more advanced than what we're doing in, in our UK office. So um, it's it's an amazing place for people to come and experience, but it's great that people are recognizing what we're doing here on our own in, in the MENA region. Excellent, thank you. Um, so next question also from Maria uh, is, uh, which are the countries that are most uh, interested in? So I, I think this ties into the, uh, the previous questions. So um, if uh, UAE companies are interested in communicating to global audience, so maybe just which countries uh, are most interesting? For us to reach out to, do you mean? For us to yeah, communicate. I think so. It just it just depends on what the brief is. So, for example, we have um, a client that wants us to communicate in Kuwait and Saudi. Um, some of us, our other clients want us to look further afield to the Levant region, uh, which we do for Disney. So we're communicating across nine regions that, that we do from here. It just depends on um, the, the brief and the objective. Um, we, we do a lot of the outreach here from Dubai, but then we have partners that we can work with. But again, it all depends on which territories your client uh, wants to be visible in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is also important here to mention that uh, UAE is technically the hub where you find a lot of global, I would say, companies whom are reinforcing their standards and their presence here in the region through the UAE. 
And uh, having yeah. said that, they're already having these two ways of communication or mm -hmm. the channel wrong to. And they're open to actually most of the countries across the globe, and they're trying to showcase their presence here in the region through their establishment and presence in the UAE. Uh, thank you. Um, also, Michael is thanking uh, and uh, sending all the best for uh, GCC <laughs> chapter. Um, and I want to thank you, um, Maysoon and Louise, for uh, the lovely webinar and uh, all the best in, in the chapter. And I hope to meet you also in person soon. soon. Thank you very, thank you very much, Jasna. Thanks for sending this up, and thank you for listening. Thank you, thank everyone. You. And of course, uh, thank you to all the attendees. Uh, and you will get the recording uh, tomorrow in your the link in your email. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.